Hey guys, Basil here with BTEX. This video is all about how the Mate 8 from Huawei stacks up against the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. This Note 7 is a streamlined, beautiful, elegant phone. The Mate 8 is a larger 6-inch screen phone versus 5.7-inch screen, and it's beefier too. It has flat sides, so it's relatively easy to hold securely, but only if you've got big hands. That said, the Mate 8 is an all-metal phone, doesn't cost anywhere near as much, so could be the winner if you're looking for screen size for less money. As far as the Note 7 goes, you've got a curved display on the front, you've got a curved glass back as well, a metal frame, USB Type-C at the base, S Pen at the base, it's also IP68 certified, so it's generally a more premium package, suggesting you really do get what you pay for in this respect. Side by side, therefore, it's going to be the Note 7 every time. Same comes down to the screen as well. You've got an IPS Neo Full HD display on the Mate 8, and that's versus a Super AMOLED Quad HD display on the Note 7. The Note 7 looks better, it looks better off angle, although I will say, even though it's much, much sharper, I didn't really spot too many pixels, if any at all, on the Mate 8. So I wouldn't really let the Full HD versus the Quad HD be a big factor in my decision making personally. What I would though is the internals. It has Emotion UI 4.0 as well, not 4.1 versus Samsung's TouchWiz. Samsung's TouchWiz is a more refined experience. Emotion UI isn't the latest version. Huawei hasn't historically been the best for updating their Emotion UIs across old devices, and it's a tiny bit buggy. Generally smooth, generally performs well in most applications, but there are a few elements in the UI which do let it down, and that's versus a really, really refined experience in Samsung's TouchWiz, with the S Pen support, 1496 levels of pressure sensitivity, note takers dream. What you also end up with across both is fantastic app support thanks to the Android on board. If you take a look at both of the phones and you take a look inside, you've got some fantastic specs too. A Kirin 950 processor versus a Snapdragon or Exynos processor depending on the region. Three or four gigabytes of RAM depending on the version of the Ascend or the Mate 8 that you go for. And that is versus a four gig of RAM on the Note 7. 64 gig of internal memory on the Note 7 with micro SD card expandability, 32 or 64 gig on the Mate 8. Huawei well, likes to make it a little bit difficult, but they give you options, which isn't always a bad thing at all. Now taking a look at the camera setup, you've got a 16 megapixel rear camera, an 8 megapixel front camera on the Mate 8, although the rear camera does have smaller pixel sizes than those of the Note 7. The Note 7 has a 12 megapixel rear camera, so less pixels, bigger pixel size suggests better low light performance. It's also got an f1.7 lens, 5 megapixel front camera. In fact, it's the same camera setup as found on the Samsung Galaxy S7, which bodes very well indeed. As far as all the other elements go, you've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth across both, NFC, etc. Really, really premium, really, really great. Although I will say the fact that you've got micro USB connectivity or USB Type-C connectivity, sorry, on the Note 7 versus micro USB on the Mate 8 and that S Pen mean that the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 really just wins pretty much everything for me because they're two real key features that I value a lot. Finally, battery life, and this is the area that the Mate 8 might really storm ahead here with a 4,000 milliamp cell under the hood, and that's versus a 3,500 milliamp cell inside the Note 7. What do you guys think? Is it Huawei all the way, or do you prefer the Note 7 because it has an S Pen and that IP68 certification and that curved screen like me? Let us know in the comments section below. Like this video, click like, like the channel, subscribe. It's how you'll stay on top of everything we do. Thanks for watching, BTEX.